So the blade stays on the soil the whole time. It skirts along the ground. It finds the soil's contour. When I'm scything around fruit trees, I can just go and touch the back. Say this is my fruit tree right here. I can go and touch the back of that with my blade. Cut away from and it. Pull forward. Uh huh. Kind of go around. Touch back. Beautiful. And there's my tree. Got some wonderful yeah. hand tools yes. here that, yes. that you've made yourself. Yeah, and and made and adapted and and learned from the old school. You know, you always learn from from the old school, and you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel, but you want to bring it forward and make it appropriate to to what you need to do now. And so, for um, just a little history, is I I've always thought, oh, the side that's such a romantic notion to use the side to to cut the grass and be out there and use your body and stuff. And so I got several old school scythes and tried to use them, tried to sharpen them. And, and it was just miserable. It was like bludgeoning the grass and it didn't work. And it took me a number of years to find the right methodology and the right um, blades and the right techniques to sharpen the mm -hmm. blade and mm -hmm. set that blade up for your body type and uh, set it up ergonomically so that it's more or less effortless to use. Ooh, nice. And so um, the blade I brought up to demonstrate with, and we'll just grab it right here. Um, this, this is my open field grass blade. So it's very lightweight, very long. This is not, oh, yeah. not oh, yeah. a blade that I would use if I had um, rough material or little saplings or blackberries. Mm -hmm. I have different blades for different circumstance. Okay. So I have a very, very coarse, tough blade for if I'm going in brush. Or I have uh, in the same blade I can cut down inch and a half saplings wow. with. Wow. Um, and then I have a medium sized field blade if it's unproven ground where I don't know if there might be sticks or stones or bowl holes or whatever I would use that blade. Um, but this is for uh, in an area that I mow frequently and I know there's no obstacles and, and stuff and I can cover a lot of, a lot of ground in a short period of time. Um, the, the snath itself is set up so that the center of balance oh. is right there. So it's thicker on this side as opposed to the American school or the old style American sides that are heavy at the bottom mm. and small at the top. So my, I can almost mow single-handedly with this blade because the center of balance is right there. Um, the other thing that I really learned about the sides is that um, most American school sides were sharpened with uh, whetstone, like mm -hmm. those pedal mm -hmm. whetstones in the field. And that takes off a lot of material and you can never get as sharp a blade as you can with the Austrian style blades. Um, because it, it makes a sharp edge, but it's a blunt sharp edge. This is a very thin sharp edge. Yes, it is thin. And so this is sharpened with two different techniques. So the technique you use in the field is with a whetstone. So I have a little holster and a, and a stone. This is a natural stone and there's different grades and every five or so minutes you sharpen it just by going along both the blade, sides both sides just very lightly like this there it is wow so it's very quick to sharpen it with the whetstone in the field but after about 12 to 20 hours depending upon what you're mowing you do a process called peening which that is sharpening the blade by hammering the blade, the very edge of the blade, mm -hmm. with an anvil and a hammer. Mm -hmm. And that, this is a mild steel blade, so it moves 
when you hammer it with the, with the anvil. Okay. And so it stretches the edge of that blade oh. out very, very, very thin. So that's how you get the thin edge. Yeah. It's just and then, and hammering it. Exactly. Mm. And then over the process of using the stone to sharpen it, it kind of wears that yeah. edge back very slightly over sense. a number of uh, honings. And then you'll need to repeen the edge and draw it back out. And so just with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of skill, you can learn to set this system up for your body, your height, mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. weight, the type of material you're mowing, and um, it'll last you years and years and years. Um, and the, the, there's so many beautiful things about using the scythe that I love. Um, one is the, the grass grows back quickly because it's a very, very clean cut. It's not like using a weed whacker or a lawnmower or a flail mower that I, I akin to mowing grass with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it bludgeons it. This is a very, very clean cut. So imagine you get a very clean cut, mm -hmm. like a glass cut, mm -hmm. it heals very quickly. Yes, if you get yes. a very ragged cut right, on it, your skin, it takes a long time to heal. So that's why the, the grass can just yeah. bounce, bounce yeah. right back up. The other thing about it is you're able to mow the grass and you end up with long pieces of grass. You know, this, this grass behind us is six to eight inches long maybe but you can grow i mean mow uh you know three feet tall grass with the same amount of effort because it's just one cut and it drops so the long stems of grass are really really good for animal fodder and they're really really good for mulch because they don't decompose too fast if you've ever mowed grass uh and then you put that mowed mulch in a pile it becomes slimy it, yeah, and yeah, anaerobic right, right. and it's stinky yeah that's not good for soil food okay. so you want the loft and that slow decomposition not not that fast decomposition so it has not not to mention the health that it brings for the mower. Yeah. It's quiet. Yeah. I, uh, the best time to mow is early in the morning when the dew has yet to lift from the grass. Mm -hmm. So the, the, when the, the dew is still on the grass, the, the plant is still open and receptive because it drinks in that dew through its cell wall structure. Mm -hmm. And so it's very supple. And when you're mowing at that time, it just drops beautifully. Oh. And as soon as the sun comes out and beats on it or the wind comes, it hardens off and it becomes a little tougher. And so normally when I mow, I mow a half an hour to an hour earlier in the morning before the dew lifts. So I come out and I can mow and I can hear the birds and see, visit with the plants and see what the crickets are doing and the bugs and everything. It's quiet. It's it's. It's really tranquil. It's you, very it? meditative. It's it it's like my early morning Tai Chi. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I feel like I, I haven't really woken up if I haven't gotten out and, and gotten that early morning side in. So, Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, we're not at early morning, but could you still show us how oh, you do it? Oh, of course. We have some very lush material here that's part of the cover crop that we did uh, when we did this earthwork nice. earlier this season. So I figured this would be a nice place to show you. And let me just step back here and uh, show you what's possible in a pretty short amount of time. So normally I start from a, a clean edge. make that look just so easy, even if it's not the first thing in the morning. So the blade stays on the soil the whole time. It skirts along the ground. It finds the soil's contour. Oh, missed a little. Oh, I 
would much rather have sides all over American suburbs doing the lawn. The noise alone. And so, not only is it quicker, cleaner, and healthier for your body, but it's a lot more accurate. When I'm scything around fruit trees, I can just go and touch the back. Say this is my fruit tree right here. I can go and touch the back of that with my blade. Cut away from pull it. Pull forward. Uh huh. Kind of go around. Touch back. Beautiful. And there's my tree. Wow. Wow. A weed whacker might have nicked the bark yeah, or taken it out. Sure, sure. So this is one of our very much used, and everyone that lives here on the property, I train how to use these. And, and you make it to fit them or part yep. you know, the, the Yeah, we do have a variety of snaths, which is the handle, what the hat handle's called. Um, so, and I have several that are adjustable, so we can adjust it to their body. Um, this one I made as fixed handle, but it's fixed it's to my body. That's right. This is part of your body. <laughs> this is, sides um, get tuned up and, and become very personal objects, like a toothbrush. So they're, they're one of those things that once you get it adjusted and it's part of your feel, it's an extension of your arm. Mm -hmm. it, um, it looked like it looked yeah. like it was just part of your body, yeah. just doing 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 that. Yeah. So cutting it's the easy part. <laughs> 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 then you have all this material to to yeah. lift up and yeah. feed to animals and bring to the to the bed. So um, let me show you this next tool. Maybe you want to grab it. So this is, this is a simple grass rake, and I tried a bunch of different rakes before I kind of settled on this design, and this is based on a rake that I found in a barn at a neighbor's place, and they thought it was a relic not functional at all. And I tried it, and I'm like, oh my god. It doesn't work at all if you cut grass with a weed whacker okay. or a lawnmower, huh. but it works great. Scythe grass yeah? because scythe grass is long. single long stems. All right, okay, okay, right? instead of clumps. Yes. Yeah, so this is one piece of hickory with holes drilled in it and bamboo, bamboo oh, skewers All righty. from our own bamboo patch and pieces of wire to stabilize it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. One sheetrock screw through there. About as simple as it gets. Yep, and this is a black locust handle. So we can just rake this up. And you notice the side put all the material in one row, right along the edge, right? Yeah. So it, okay. it's so all it set up rain. already. And I can just kind of roll that edge up. It's just a little bit more down here. So when you do a big field, you go around the field from the outside edge in a clockwise direction, and you end up with all these rows spiraling inward. Oh, I love it. And then you roll two outside rows into the center row, and you end up with this big row, and then you roll that one big row up. There you got a little bit. Nice, easy. Easy, it's yeah. lightweight, you've got a good reach. Look at all that, my cow would love that stuff. Well. Okay. Buttercup. How about we? <laughs> but I thought you said you wanted to feed this to the mulch piles. We can we feed it to everybody. So okay. yes, we can definitely we can feed it to the mulch piles. Great. Oh, this is yeah. What it's, it, it reminds me is that both of your tools are examples of using the right tool honed, I mean honed for the individual, yeah. I can imagine that, yeah. and honed for the right, for the situation. Yeah. What a difference instead of trying to make, you know, one hammer work for every tool that yeah. you need. You no, know? no, it really makes a big difference to just fine tune everything so it 
it feels good in your hands, it has the right balance, and it does exactly what you want it to do. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I can show you another tool over here that we do to cultivate the soil. We don't till, but we do occasionally cultivate the soil. Okay. Show me. We can go on down here. So these are all done by hand. This is a shovel and, a, and also to create the, the soil structure in our beds, we use this implement here, which is called a U-bar or a broad fork. And this is one that I welded up. I've made dozens and dozens of these. This is actually one of the first. Um, and this, this has tines. Uh, it's like a big pitchfork. Oh, but it's these tines huge. are like tw uh, 20 inches long yep, yep. and fairly stout and they're about four to five four and a half inches apart and this helps us aerate our soil uh, down to about 20 inches mm -hmm. without um, changing the soil strata so the oh. organic layer stays on top the more mineral layer stays at the bottom where um, rototilling kind of I purees see, it all you just mix up it, yeah, right. and it chops up all the worms and it chops up all the, the, the roots mm -hmm. of your weeds. This combs weeds up to the top. It leaves the worms intact. And by just doing the fork, I can imagine just doing the fork, both your, the structure is there, yep. I mean, like you said, but also you're keeping all that, the, the networks, the living. Yep, the, the fungal living, strands and all of that. All still of that. Kept pretty much intact, yep. right? Yep. Okay. And so we use this for all of our annual beds. And essentially the way it's used is you just stand on it and dance it down into the soil till it's all the way down and then lean back. Oh, wow. And it doesn't turn the soil, it just sifts up through it. And then you take another bite. Stand it down in, lean back, and sift up through. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's very gentle, and for your body, it's very ergonomic. It's very even it flow of sides. energy. Yeah. You're using your body weight to get it down into the soil, and you're using your body weight just to pull it back through. And we actually only end up having to do this like once every three or four years really? uh -huh. to our beds because they're beds that we maintain with the mulch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we don't walk on our beds so we walk in the paths and we maintain like we can look at this bed this has been dormant and just pull back this mulch a little bit oh, and wow. you can look at this soil yeah. Oh, and it's, it's, oh, look at that. It's still crumbly yep. and soft. Yep. And smells fabulous. Yep. So, so you, you, you put a blanket over your yep. beds. We right? tuck them in. We yeah. care for our soil. <laughs> well, I don't do you want to give it a go? I want to give it a go. Now, I don't, you know, did, did you already do the pull it forward no, part? No, go ahead and step it down the rest of the way. Okay. Kind of dance I it in. See, I can see you get, you learn your balance on this thing. Yep. There you go. Just kind of lean back. Yeah! <laughs> I might have taken a little too too big a bite. Sometimes you need to take like a four inch bite or yeah. a six inch bite, depending upon how loose the soil is already. I can see that just so like So that's gonna be a big bite. Take take a little bit shallower. And we have three different sizes I can here that we use. So this little, is the little, longest little one. Yep. And we have yeah. one that has 14 inch bar yeah. Yeah. tines and one that has 10 inch tines. So it depends Probably how, on the bed how deep itself. that we need to work in. Yep. Right. And generally how I test is I do what I call a stick test. So I just grab a stick and I pull back the mulch and I see how far I can push that stick into okay. the soil. And if I can push it down 14, 16 inches, it doesn't need you, Barry. 
I can only oh. push it down four inches. It needs, Maybe it I needs should some U-bar. help. Yep. Well, I'm not going to till your whole bed, but I could see I could see that this too could be a meditation. It's more it work. Is. I mean, certainly than it is than your scything, but 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 the, you know that you have something that's balanced. Like that, that makes yep. such a difference. Yeah. And the beauty of it is when um, I mean I used to rototill and I used to uh, run my tractor and such. But um, the beauty of this is you don't have to do the whole area. You just do the beds that you need to do. Uh-huh. And, you know, it might take me 15, 20 minutes to do this whole bed. And then it's good for three years. You know, I, with, there probably are three more days worth of things we could cover. But let me just give an open space. Is there anything that, you know, we've covered a lot of your... Not everything. Is there anything else that we, you know, you want to leave us with the last thought or reminder or um, piece of advice or what inspires you well it there's so many different things i don't even know where mm -hmm. to start and we've covered a lot of them but i think really just a, as a society wanting to move forward in these you know challenging times mm -hmm. that we're we're yeah. in to everybody to just to look at their surroundings and the way that they interact with the natural world and try and find uh, that balance and to realize we are part of the natural world we are not separate from it and so to to work with that in such a way that we we hold our nutrients mm -hmm. on site our animals in reverence mm -hmm. and our in our soil mm -hmm. above all you know <laughs> and, and uh yes yes, yes. yeah and remember that food is our medicine and if we don't grow our food with as much nutrient dense potential as possible then we're going to have to rely on other well, medicines well, too that's to right that. and we are then, then we are weakened yeah. the soil is weakened everything the whole everything yeah. life yeah. is weakened yeah. in that way yeah thank you for um paving the way and teaching others and being a model for this yeah. on, on I am inspired by oh, Inspiration Farm. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming and helping share this with wow. everyone. We learn more every time. Yeah. 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 And I'm hoping that you are learning more at every time. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janaea Donaldson. I'm with Brian Kirkley, Inspiration Farm. Join us and the chickens and the pigs and the goats <laughs> and the ducks and the worms and the cow. And who have I forgotten? And the cats. The soil. And the soil. <laughs> and the mycorrhizae. Yeah. Next time. <laughs>